Good morning. I hope you're having a great day. Today on my episode of What's on My Workbench, I'm going to be working on a holster for this pistol here. So I hope you enjoy following along. I'll go through the different steps that I go through to make what I refer to as a pancake holster for this. And I'm also going to make a matching Western gun belt to go with it. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks for following along. Okay, to get started, I took some uh, poster board here and I laid out this pistol on here. And it's going to be carried on the right side. So I always work as if it's on the right side. So the first thing I did is I laid it down and I sketched the outline of the gun itself just so I can figure out where it lays on there. And I'm going to make this pistol so that it's canted slightly forward on the belt line. Here's the belt line. And that makes it easier to carry and, in my opinion, easier and safer to draw. Then I will lay out the outer shape of this pancake sheath. And what I did is I laid in first a stitching line here that will make where the gun will lay down in the holster. And I laid out one on the other side as well. Once I had this inner stitch line and the belt hole uh, laid out on here, then I put the outer stitch line and then my outer cut line. So that ends up with my pattern for the holster. And this will be, it's two layers, obviously, to hold the, the gun. This will be the layer that's the back side of it. The front piece of leather has got to have extra leather to go over all of that. And I'll show you how I lay that out. And then this will be for the thumb release for the, the gun. There'll be a strap off the front piece of leather that tucks around over um, the slide here. And there'll be a thumb release here. And we'll show that when we get to it. So I think that makes sense. It does to me. And it will probably will to you as we go along here. Let's get some leather out. So what I've got here is a piece of leather that I cut the straps off along the top up here for the belt. And I try to use, if I'm making a matching, I try to use the same leather for the belt straps as I do the holster because every piece of leather takes dye a little bit differently. And I dip dye my belts and I'm not sure if I'll dip dye this so it could come out slightly different anyway, uh, but I'm gonna hard work with this whole roll here. I'm just gonna cut. So what I was trying to explain here, <clears throat> I need to stretch this piece of leather or cut myself extra on this pattern to allow for the part going over the gun. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'll start sketching it here. So this side, is gonna stay pretty much the same. I need extra leather going this direction. So with that in mind, I will sketch or trace around this side of the holster. When I get down to this point down here, I'm going to then move this to the right. I said I needed two inches, so I'm gonna slide it two inches to the right. measure make sure I got two inches extra is good and I can trim it to fit once I get it glued down uh, let me get this I forgot to get the top part of this strap because that'll stay the same <clears throat> I move it over I'm gonna go two and a half just to give myself room to work with and you'll see when we get to that part of it I'll trim that off and I'm going to come down here a little bit large on the bottom as well. My pencil's not marking very well. All right. Probably can't see it, but I can. Theoretically, I could 
I could just glue this whole thing on there and then trim it to fit, but it's too hard to work around this big of a piece. So I'm gonna now cut out that line. I'll stay outside of my line here even. You see these scissors are pretty sharp. These are some I picked up earlier this year and I really enjoyed the, the scissors. I bought these scissors from uh, Eric Landwerland Leather in Indianapolis. Once I get these layered up, I will, um, I'll sand the edges so that they're the same on both sides make them smooth and finish the edges. So if you remember, this is the back of the sheath. The gun is gonna go in uh, roughly like that. This will be the thumb release, so it'll actually get cut off about here when I'm done. But I leave that, that can be done as one of the last items. Then this part of the leather will go on here. And it'll get sewn in like that and cut to match the other side. Then this piece here will be bent over and have a snap on it for the release. So the next thing I need to do is to dye these. And I'm gonna dye those um, in the color that we're using for the belt. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that and get these uh, hanging after they've been dyed so that I can work on the belt. And I've already got the straps cut for the belt. And it's the Western belt and I've done that belt video before so i'm going to be a little bit abbreviated on the um, belt part and i'm going to focus on the holster so i'm going to get these uh dip dyed here for you all right i've set up here in my doorway it's got good ventilation and i will pour my dye in here bent paper clips here and I'm just going to dip the leather in here real quick So I've laid out the Western pattern that has three inch uh, stitching pattern with a half inch gap. And then I used my uh, wing dividers to put a light crease down the belt. And I did that from both directions so that I can follow that pattern with my stitching chisel. You can see I've got started, I have three here and I'll skip the half inch line up on my little crease from the wing divider and continue on down here and um, a little bit of a challenge to keep the lines parallel uh, especially if you're a perfectionist it can be a little frustrating but it's worth it in the end And I finish with half a pattern. So instead of uh, three times with this six hole, it's one and a half. Now I'll do that on the other side. And then to, to get this side of it, to get these aligned, what I do is I'll put my chisel in butt it up against there, bring it around to the other side, and it works better if I work from the opposite side each time. So I'll line it up in here, 
get it on my wing divider line here and create the holes. Sometimes I will do the um, the holes after I dye the leather, and sometimes I'll do it before. And part of it is the look that I'm trying to achieve. On this one here, I, I like what I think is a little bit of an antique look to it. So if I put the holes in before I dye it, then the leather, when I run it through the dye, will take dye quicker along these holes and along the edge. And so it gets kind of a faded look from one side to the other. I'll show you after I get it dyed. Well, it really won't show until you get the finish on it very well. But you'll see towards the end here that it's got an inconsistency in that dye. And some would think that was a mistake, but I like that look. It's kind of a, like you say, an aged or an antique look to it. So I'm going to continue doing this, the length of the belt. And then I will dye the leather. After that, we'll be, um, be stitching. I let the leather dye dry overnight. Then I applied a coat of resin which is a clear acrylic, to the front of the leather. It's not really necessary when I'm doing black thread. I do that a lot of times if I'm doing white thread to keep the dye from staining the thread as I pull it through the uh, strip of leather. But in this case, I do it because it helps keep the leather dye from darkening my uh, uh, leather wrap here on my stitching pony, which then may get transferred to a lighter color project. And the reason why I do this Western pattern uh, on just the front piece of the leather is to hide the stitches on the back. I think it makes a cleaner looking belt on the inside. And since I've got this area here I skip over, what I end up doing is I make that transition from one section to the other on the back side of the leather. And that gives a, a much, or much cleaner look to the project. So I let the two pieces of leather here that will become the holster, I dyed those, let those dry overnight. I trued up this edge here, that's a, a one inch wide strip now. And the next thing I need to do is to establish my stitch lines on both pieces of leather so that I know where I'm gonna be gluing. Now the stitch lines are on here and I've got a little bit of a curve there. I'm gonna straighten that out. It makes it a lot easier for this next step to do that. So to do that, what I'll do I'll get this all lined up where I want it on here. And you can see I'm overcut. I will sand this to its final shape once I've got the two layers uh, laminated together. So I'm gonna mark over here on the edge of the leather where this top stitch line is here and where the bottom one is here. And I'll connect those two marks here this is on the inside of the um, holster then i'm going to layer this on top and figure out where i'm going to want to put this strap it's going to go kind of like this when i'm done let me move a little bit here, see if I can improve this view. 
And then once I'm comfortable that I've got this where I want it, then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna mark on this leather where that's at. And I'm going to put a line here. Now my stitching, when I get done, will follow this line. Now I'm not gonna really bear down here. I'm just gonna lightly put a mark here. This be where I put my stitches. And I'm gonna transfer that to the back. And you'll see why here in, in just a moment. And I'll connect those two lines here. I do that because my next step is I'm going to apply contact adhesive here and here so that I can stick these two together. Once I get that done, then I'll put the holes in uh, and I'll do my stitching. Now that gets this part of the tab. Next, I've got this part here. So I'm gonna do similar on that. I'm gonna lay this here, lay it here on my lines. Stitching comes out over here on this. I've also done it where I've poked through, um, you know, every so often, and I'll I'll poke through. So this is where the stitching line is going to be here. I'll do it that way on this one. And I, once again, I'm doing this right now, mainly so I know where to apply my contact adhesive. That's on that part of it. And then I'll do the same thing on this part. So this is the, I wanna mix up here and put it on the wrong piece, the wrong place, but this is the back. glue here than I need. And I put the adhesive on here twice so I'll come back when I'm ready to layer these up I'm just going to let this tack up I'll put a second coat on it so I'm going to let this tack up and then I'm going to uh, apply a second coat on here especially on this flesh side and when I'm ready to layer this up, I'll come back. All right, they're both tacky, not wet anymore. I'm gonna layer these up. Take care to make sure that I get this lined up as best I can. And keep in mind, I would rather have the top overlap the bottom because the bottom is my, is really close to my finish that I'm looking for. Okay. I'll tap that in place. Yep, that'll work fine. If you've ever tried to pull back apart the two layers of leather, you'll see that it, it'll, it'll destroy the leather, so it's not coming apart. On lighter weight projects, the contact adhesive is really enough, but I'm gonna go ahead and obviously stitch around all of this. So now that I've got this glued on this side here, I need to figure out how much leather 
I need bunched up like this for the gun. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can, you can measure here and try to guesstimate how much it is. You can take a strap of leather that's of similar thickness to the face and you can, um, you can measure with that. And what I mean by measure with that would be to start here and go up and over the gun. You could be doing this for a knife, whatever the utensil is here. And I'll put a mark here. And that is how much leather I need to the next uh, stitch line on here. So that is going to be about four and a half inches. So if I measure on my pattern here from there to there, I've got three and an eighth, three and an eighth. And I said four and a half. So that's one and three eighths inches extra leather to get that arch. And if anything, I'm going to err on the side of being smaller because once I get this leather wet and I start to wet form it to it, then it'll give me some extra space because it will stretch. Yeah. So to kind of check my math, I'll put the... Uh, the gun in the holster, kind of tuck it down in here where this trigger guard's gonna go. Bring it up and over. And I'm gonna put just a light mark here about where that would be. And then I can measure here to that mark. And I am... Yeah, I'm within an eighth of an inch. So I'm liking where that's coming out on there. So next what I'm going to do. So here was the outline of the gun. This is where I said I'm going to put my stitch line. And I'm over this far because I've got this front sight here. If I aligned it with here, it would be hard to get that front sight pulled out. Now, I've had it before where I've done that and it's worked out okay because... The front sight just makes kind of a groove in that wet form leather, but I'm going to give myself a little extra space. So I'm coming over the three and an eighth inches, and I'm going to establish where that line's at. And I want this to be parallel. I want these two stitch lines here to be Pretty close to parallel. So I'll measure over here three and an eighth and put a mark. And then that will be my, my mark on the inside here. And then my four and a half over to here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna establish my stitch line across here. Some people aren't comfortable with, you know, kind of a, I'm gonna call this free forming this. They want a pattern with a stitch line and you can go through and figure all that out. The first one I did, I kind of reverse engineered it. I put it all together, sewn together, didn't glue it, pulled it back apart and made a pattern for it but I thought it would be a gun that I was gonna repeat. And so that's why I went through that trouble and I haven't repeated it. That's been three years ago or two and a half. So I'm gonna lightly put a mark here. This will, this will be my stitch line in this piece of leather, not in that one. And then I need to do the same thing on this one on my line here. And I'll check myself to see that I'm square to my other stitch line here. 
yeah, looks, looks pretty good. Parallel, I should say, not square. So once again, I'll apply glue out here. I'll transfer this line to the inside and I'll apply glue on all of this. Now I'll have more done than I need, but that's okay. We'll trim it to fit once I get, get it done. So you've already seen that process. I'm gonna come back once I have the adhesive on both of these. All right, so I have the two layers here, adhesive on them, and I'm gonna line up Put a double back in it here and line this up. I've got my line here that helps. I've also done this where I went ahead and created the Stitching holes here, did it on the back, sewed them together, then opened this up a, like a butterfly and a, applied the adhesive. And I'm gonna tap this down. The reason why I do that is I can press here, but I get a much better contact between the two layers of contact adhesive when I tap it down with the hammer. You can also use a uh, slicker. I've had people say that maybe they live in an apartment and the noise bothers people. You can do this with a slicker as well. All right, so now I'm gonna take a knife and I'm just gonna trim off, uh, to work my way around here and I'll stay outside of this line here and I'll sand those two layers together. I know I keep saying that, but I just, it's easier to do it that way for me. And I'll worry about the final shape of this once I get the gun fitted in there. Okay. And we'll just kind of place it in here real quick. You can see where we're at. You see it's starting to take shape. I'll wet mold this and, uh, and get it fitted to the gun here. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put in my, my stitching holes, and I'm going to get this sewn together here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to follow along here with my 5 millimeter stitching chisel, and I'll put my holes in here. I'm going to stop about a quarter inch back here, and about a quarter inch back from the edge of this bottom piece. Let me trim this a little bit closer here. The reason why I stay back a quarter of an inch is that allows me to do my sanding and finishing and all that without messing up my threads. And the belt has black stitching, so I'm gonna do black stitching here as well. Then I will connect stitching that comes out around the outside of this down to here. And then the hole here for the belt to run through will go in this area. I'm gonna start here with my straight line first. Stay back a quarter of an inch here from the edge. Same thing here.
come into this hole here, so I'll put this right between them. So I'm going to get this uh, sanded, trimmed to where these are flush, and then I'll come back at that point. So I've got this edge sanded. Uh, this is not finished sanded by any means, but I wanted to get them lined up so that I could do the uh, marking here for my stitch line. You can use uh, you can use a wing divider for it, or you can use your groover with just the creaser in it and mark it. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to put my groove here to here. And then all the way around to my other established stitch hole there. And then I will put, I'll use my uh, chisels and I will follow that line around. And since it's curved, I'll be stuck using the two tine stitching chisel to follow around there because that'll follow that the curvature. little dimples here to see how I like the spacing. It actually comes out pretty good, so I'll just go with it. Sometimes you have to lengthen or shorten them, and that's where the single chisel comes in handy to do that. All right, now that I have the holes here, I'm going to sew uh, both of these patterns, and I'm going to do that in a saddle stitch. And uh, once I get that done, then we'll wet form the front of this. So when I saddle stitch something, this, I try to think of where the stress points are. And I think up here at this point here where the gun is being loaded in is going to be the biggest stress point. This one would be secondary. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to start or finish in either one of them. I'll be close to this one because I want that doubled up thread out of the way. But I'm going to start down here, <clears throat> equal up my thread, and I'm going to work my way around this holster. All right, I've got my first side stitched up. I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this one. And once again, I wanna do this with one set of strings, so I only have one spot where I'm ending. And um, so what I'll do is I'll start here. I'll work my way here, around to here, and then back to there. And all I will do, there'll be a back stitch back stitch right here and that's going to be the only place you'll see a back stitch so i'm going to do that and then we'll come back okay we're making good progress here so you can see i finished my stitching on here and then i took it in and i ran water down the inside of the holster here and on the outside. I went ahead and wet everything on the outside because sometimes you can get some water marking if you don't, you know, where you, where it's not been wet before. So I, and I let this sit for a few minutes here to um, get the moisture even throughout the leather. So now I'm going to place the firearm in the holster here. I'm 
I know, it's wet leather. I'm just putting it in here real quick. I'm gonna take it out and wrap it here if I like how it looks, and I think I do. I'll do my final trimming here once I get this shaped. All right, yeah, I like how that looks. So I'm gonna wrap this up in some plastic and then tape. All right, so I've got it wrapped up plastic and tape here. Now I'm gonna put it in here and I'll do a little bit of wet farming around here. Um, and I've done it before on all stainless steel guns. The moisture doesn't hurt it. Uh, if it was my firearm, I probably wouldn't wrap it, but this one here is for uh, a friend of mine. So I am going to slide this in here. And uh, we'll press in here a little bit, some of these areas, and get it wet formed to the gun. So here's kind of my initial thoughts on it. I think it looks pretty good. I will trim this off here once I get the uh, it wet form. I've done it before and then you end up stretching an area up in here and then you don't have quite the uh, line that you want on it here. I'll trim this up back here as well. I'm, I'm liking what I've got going here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this sit and kind of get its initial drying here for probably an hour or more. And then I'll come back and work on it some. And I want this to come across the flat place here on the back. So I can pull here a little bit, get that aligned where I want it. And let that get formed to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry for probably an hour with the gun in here. And then I'm gonna come back and I will work a little bit more on my wet forming around here. I like how that looks where you can kind of see the shape of the slide and the trigger guard and all of that. So, but I'm gonna let this um, set up a little bit. While I'm waiting on that holster to dry, I am going to glue up the matching belt. And uh, much like the contact adhesive of the application I do on the holster, I'm going to put two coats on letting it tack up between the coats to make sure that I've got a really good bond. It will be sewn along the edges. The sewing is, in my opinion, more decorative than functional. The contact adhesive uh, essentially makes it one piece of leather. It won't come apart with the contact adhesive on there. Okay. It's tacked up now. It's tacky, not wet. So I'm going to layer these up, and this is where the buckle's going to go, and it's going to fold back on itself. If you double back this leather, it wants to get a bunch of wrinkles in it. So what I do to kind of eliminate some of that is I will, you'll notice, I'll get this kind of formed where that uh, bend over is there. A little bit of a challenge to do around the uh, camera. And then I will, I have had some of these where I've left the back natural. It's, uh, these are all custom belts. So I make them how the customer wants them. Or if I show them a, a model, then they can see how I finish it and then decide how they want to finish it. So I will uh, get these layered up. So we're getting there. I'll run the hammer down the center. If you hammer down the stitches, it helps to define them. And it also sets them down a little bit below the la top layer of the uh, belt and that protects them from wear. And I will 
take my slicker or burnisher and I'll make sure they got really good contact between the layers here. Next, I'll get out the die and I'll just apply it with an applicator on the back here to get the back dyed to match the front. Next, I line up my bag punch here to make the slot for the belt. You can see I've got the two slots cut for the, uh, for the belt here. And it is set so that the gun is tipped slightly or canted slightly forward. I think it's more comfortable to wear and an easier draw. I've created both of my slots here to hang it on the belt. And you'll see that it's canted forward a little bit. Um, next, I'm going to do my finished sanding here on the uh, edge of the leather. Get that burnished. And then I'm going to work on the thumb release here. Once I get all that done, then I'll put the sealer on it and we're getting closer to finished. I'm glad you're here to follow along. Working here, doing a little bit of burnishing. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that the way you do it's wrong or the way I do it's right, but the majority of the burnishing I do is, is just with just with water. So I'll sand the leather and I'll get it in the shape that I'm looking for, and then I will burnish this. Uh, this is just for just a moment or two of working with water. I'm going to let that dry. It's a little dark here along the edges. That dries out. And then once I get it uh, dry, I'm going to go ahead and apply fresh dye all the way around the edge of this. And then I'll come back and I'll do another burnish. And then after I get my first coat of resolene on here, then I will uh, use like 600 grit sandpaper, do a final sanding on it, touch up any dye that I need. And um, when I get my last coat of uh, resolene on here, you'll see it makes a very nice finish. This flush side here, I will slick down with resolene as well. And it'll look pretty, pretty tight when I'm done with it. I can, always, I can always put the rough side of the leather on the inside of the holster. So I'm slick out on both sides. What I don't like about that is then this area here is the flush side. It's flush here, but if it's flush here, then it's it's seen, especially on the thumb release part. So I've made them both ways. This is the direction I decided to make this one. And uh, once I get this dyed here and a coat of resolene on, then we'll come back and I'll show you how it's looking at that point. And here's where I'm at on the, the matching belt at this point. I've got the holes made for the spots and the stitching is complete. And the next thing I need to do is to burnish the edge of this. And I'm going to go through the same process that I just described on the holster on this. I've got the holes made here ready to connect the buckle. This one's going to have a stainless steel inch and a quarter buckle. All right. So I've done some sanding. I applied... Um, some more dye to the edges here. So I'm gonna get my first coat of sealer on here. I use the Resoline Clear. Uh, the only time I use something else such as tan coat is if the piece of leather is gonna be 
I wouldn't say continually in weather, but if it's in le weather a ton and someone wants to be able to oil the leather, then I'll use the tan coat because that will allow you to oil through it. The resiline will not allow you to oil through it. It seals it up too much for that. Um, why wouldn't I use the tan coat on belts and such? If it allows the oil to get in, it also allows your sweat to get in and you're more, you're more likely to get color transfer when the belt gets wet through tan coat as opposed to resiline. Some people don't like the resiline as much because of the, it's got a sheen to it once it's, once it's dry. You can see it kind of brings this leather to life. All right, so here's pretty much the finished product. Uh, I finished my edges, I dyed them, I put the resiline on, I sanded them, and then I burnished them here again. Uh, I sanded up to 600 grit sandpaper on the edges, put my finished coat of resiline on. I made my thumb release. Yes, I intended to record that, but uh, I didn't, didn't get that done. So I want to talk just a little bit about it. The thumb release is actually fairly easy to uh, to build. The hardest thing is just making sure that you get your straps lined up, which is done during your pattern making. To make the thumb release, I took some uh, nickel plated steel here and I drilled, well, I cut it to length, round the corners. I drilled a hole for the snap, which is a line 24 snap, and then just a plain rivet there. To hold that in. You'll see that to draw it, it's really quite simple. As you come in with your hand here to grab a hold of the stock of the gun, the handle, your thumb will just come here and pop that loose and that'll allow you to pull the gun out and then in reverse here. And then you would just redo the snap. So it's really uh, pretty simple to make the the thumb release on here. So I've got one thing left to do on here. That's put my maker's mark on here. And there we go. The belt is finished as well. And I think they really go together nicely. Uh, I finished the edges just much like I did on the, the gun holster. And I think the color came out really nice. I've sent a picture of it to the, uh, the, the person that commissioned this. And I think the color and everything came out really nice. So this is the belt that I call the Western. And uh, this one here is in the uh, dark golden brown. And I've used black accents and black thread. And then the, the buckle here, that's a stainless steel buckle. I hope you enjoyed following along on this build. Uh, I think uh, this will give many years of good service for the, the owner of it. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe. And you're always welcome here in my busy little shop.